Good morning and welcome to Homepage, a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM 92.5 and 95.5. I'm Kathy Dugan and my guest today is D.H. Sermeno, author of Coffee and Cedar, Finding Strength from Memories and Rising Sunsets. This is the first time I've interviewed a real live author and your oh, name is really? D.H. Sermeno. You wrote Coffee and Cedar, Finding Strength from Memories. You also have another award winning book, Rising Sunsets. So tell us a little about yourself, D.H., so I actually um, grew up in Tampa, mm-hmm. so I'm a third-generation native Floridian, and um, writing has always been a passion of mine. Mm-hmm. So um, when I started to write, I started coming up with these stories, but a lot of them just were not, they didn't feel right. right. And so somebody told me, you need to write what you know. Mm-hmm. So after college, I went to Japan, which was one of my dreams also, wow. uh, was going over to Asia, and I became a school teacher for um, for junior high and elementary school students. And while I was there, I was forming the story in my head. I said, this would actually make a great story of an, a young American going over to Japan to teach English. Mm-hmm. So that's actually what form, became Rising Sunsets. Wow. So I took my diaries when I, when I was living over there, and I transformed them into the form of a story. That's incredible. I bet you just had an amazing experience in Japan too. I really did. I, you know, I got there when I was when I was twenty one, right after I graduated, and uh, you know, I was excited and looking forward to the adventure. And then as soon as I landed in Narita Airport, and I saw that nothing made sense because everything was written in kanji or katakana or hiragana, and I, I was, I felt like I was in had gone through the looking glass where everything was just completely upside down. Right. <laughs> and. I, the first thing that came through my mind was, what the hell have I done? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> but it's an adventure. It was something so different. So I can't even imagine stepping out and going, oh, I'm not in America anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Wow. They're just so different over there. So how long were you in Japan? I lived there for a year. Okay, a year. And I was in a very small uh, town right outside of Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. So that in itself was was fascinating. Just being there to um, to see how they were um, remembering the um, the attack from the the atomic bomb, right? And uh, their peace park was is absolutely beautiful, and it was very striking because of all the monuments and everything that they had to remind people of of the um, the dropping of the atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. And what one thing that stood um, that stood out for me is that they have what, what's called the flame of peace. Mm-hmm. And it's a flame that will continue to burn continuously until there is peace worldwide. Wow. So, yeah. It, and there was actually one of the main focal points of the Peace Park is the shell of a government building that, was, that remained from the attack. So it's, that shell is still there. And they were able to preserve it. And, and it's there as one of the main focal points of the park itself. That's got to be absolutely chilling to stand there. It, it was. It was, and I got to tell you, the um, the students that I taught were so respectful and so wonderful and so eager to learn. Um, you know, I, I would get to the classroom, and like I said, they were elementary and junior high school students. I get into the classroom, and they stand up and they bow to you as you walk in, and they bow to you as you leave, and they were very inquisitive, and they made teaching a lot of fun because it was very interactive. Wow. So. So respectful too. that. I mean, that's something about the Japanese culture is they're based on respect for others. And, you know, they always bow. They're polite. I love that. Yes. Yes. I, you know, and they were actually very um, inquisitive about life in the United States. Mm -hmm. They also wanted to practice their English. Really? And that was one thing that I, I really enjoyed. I mean, you know, they were, you know, I would wanted to practice my Japanese, but of course they wanted to practice their English. So I would try to talk to them in Japanese and then they would try to talk to, they would try to talk back to me in, in English. So we, we, we had that conversation going, which was wonderful. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Great way to learn too, by immersing yourself in the culture. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, really, there was nobody there that spoke English except for the, the, the teachers that I worked with in the school. So, um, so I really had to learn it, and and I could not speak a word prior to my getting there, nor could I read or write it, much less. So it truly was an eye-opening experience. Wow! And I have to say that one thing that really struck me is because a lot of the signs and everything that were in 
um, in kanji, I, I realized this is what it must feel like to be illiterate. Mm-hmm. I mean, because nothing made sense. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, and, that's true. Yeah. And it actually it, it opened my eyes to, adult, you know, the adult literacy um, issue that we've had in this country. So I it, it it managed to to, you know, adjust my perspective on on that issue as well. So I have to tell you that just not not just learning a different culture and learning a different language. It just broadened my horizons in many ways that I didn't even think possible. Wow. That's what makes a good writer, though, is to experience things and to be immersed in something and to be part of it. So you are writing something you know about, like Rising Sunsets. Uh, You also have your book, Coffee and Cedar. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my gosh. And at the end of each story, the grandfather, Atun, he tells his grandson. Yeah, yeah, he says, El sol no se tapa con un dedo, which literally translates to the sun doesn't cover with a finger. You can't cover the sun with your finger. So exactly. tell us about the poignancy in that statement. Sure. My grandfather, and, and I will say this book was based on my experience with my grandfather mm-hmm. and also my two great uncles because I lost my grandfather at a very young age. Oh. And they kind of stepped into that role and, and, and filled a void, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But my grandfather had this phrase that he passed to my mother and my mother passed it on to my sister and to me. And el sol no se con dedos, like you had just said, it mm-hmm. means you can't cover up the sun with a single finger. Right. But what that means is that if you have a talent, if you have a um, a gift that is inside of you that that no one can take away from you, whatever that talent is, no negative comment, no um, no obstacle, nothing is going to cover that up. So you can have someone that may be jealous or just not even care that you have this gift, but that doesn't that doesn't diminish the brilliance of it. Well, so kind of like with David in the book, David wants to be an actor and that's his yes. talent. So you can relate to that as someone who wanted to be an author. That's your talent writing. So yes. it comes from you. Exactly. Exactly. I like exactly. that. David so, goes through a lot too. Yes, he does. Mm. Yes, he does. And you know, this was uh, this was a combination of, of things that uh, that actually I went through, as well as you know other friends of mine as well. And I, wh- I will tell you that for this story, this had been this had been um, weighing on me for quite a while, just trying to get this down on paper, because I was always I was always encouraged by those three gentlemen, my mm-hmm. two great uncles and my grandfather, and encouraged to do more. And encouraged to go and pursue my dreams. And when you have someone in your corner, all, you know, whether it is a relative, whether it is a friend, whether it's maybe a, you know a teacher that you had that encourages you, when that person passes away, what do you do to remind yourself of the strength and the confidence that they taught you you have? Right. Because you don't have that constant reminder. You don't have that constant encouragement. You now have to rely on yourself. Mm-hmm to remind yourself of what they saw in you. And the other thing that struck me is that once they're gone and you have that safety net, that comfort that they provided, you're now left alone. Yeah. And it's scary. And now how are younger generations going to look to you for wisdom and for guidance? Mm -hmm. You, it's, it's almost impossible, you know, to fill those shoes. So that was what came about with this story and how, I managed to to take what they taught me and reinforce it within myself and also pass it on to other people who are younger than I. That is so that's so important too. I mean just I I love the, the title Coffee and Cedar Finding Strength from Memories because that's where we find a lot of our strengths af- after, you know, the older generation passes. My grandma my grandparents passed when I was younger as well, but I remember things that they'd said, things that they did, the encouragement that they gave me and you know, th- those memories are comforting. They are. They are. Whether it comes from pictures, whether it comes from letters, whether it, co- it doesn't matter. Um, Any time that you can remember that and just remember the good times, it's just 
that that fills you with warmth and it gives and it and it and it feeds your soul. It really does. Yeah, it does. I remember things that um, my my grandmother, uh, the, my last grandparent, passed away when I was um, just starting college, and just so much of her affected me. Things yeah. she would would have said to me back in the day when I'd be upset, and I'm like, oh, my my parents, and da da da. da. She'd always put it into perspective, and mm-hmm. it made sense to me. You know, instead of talking to a friend and just complaining to them and them going, yeah, my parents are like that too. I always wanted to call my nanny. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, Nan, what's up? You know, this is what's going on. And she would just put it right out there. She wouldn't mince words with me. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess that makes sense then, right? Mm -hmm." Exactly. Exactly. And one of my great uncles who, um, who I, who I had the longest relationship with, um, whenever I would confide in him, you know, and he'd listen and, and, and he'd give me his opinion, but he would always end each story with the same thing. He says, I'm going to tell you, and he'd always say, I'm going to tell you one thing after he'd finished the story. And he'd say, life is a beautiful thing. Yeah. And that's is. how he would end every single story. De- de- regardless of the the challenges you face, the obstacles you face, whatever, we have to take a, a step back and just realize that all of this is a gift and it's an opportunity. I love that. I love that he he, he he left you with that little bit of positivity all the time instead of just leaving Always. on a sour note or whatever. Here, you know, no matter what I just said to you, mm-hmm. life is a beautiful thing. Yeah. I love that. In Thank Coffee you. and Cedar, David goes through being bullied. He deals with self-doubt, with fear. He experiences the death of a loved one, which is really confusing for kids. And this mm-hmm. is something that a lot of our children are dealing with right now all over the country, as well as right here in North Central Florida, in Ocala and Gainesville. Um, they're dealing with this new normal and it's confusing, especially with the holidays coming up. Some have lost loved ones due to the pandemic. How are you and, and your book helping them through this process? Well, I found that a lot of a lot of people who are just unable to see their relatives, whether it just be through a screen or even unfortunately for those who may be in um, retirement homes or whatnot that they can't they can't even go see. Mm. Um, it has brought. I found that I keep hearing that it has brought them comfort because they they remember um, the good times. They remember that th- of what they were given by those individuals, and it gives them hope that yeah. this will be over soon and they can be reunited um, for those that that are, are you know that are separated. Right. For those that unfortunately have lost people um, due to the pandemic, it also gives them a sense of comfort, knowing of the gifts that that person has left them, and knowing of the advice and the and and the guidance that they have been given. It it of course it doesn't bring them back, but it helps keep that person alive within their hearts. That's exactly, you know what? That's so funny. I was just thinking that. That is so funny because that's exactly what happens. Just because they're gone physically doesn't mean they're not still there as long as they're living in your heart. And and that, Absolutely. that's so perfect. Absolutely. Wow. I mean, I've even had people tell me, you know, after reading your book, I sometimes have conversations with with my the loved one that I lost. Sure. And I love that. Whether, you know, it, it's not, it's not. They said, please don't call me crazy. I said, no, not Mm -hmm. at all. I mean, you have to have, because the silence tells you a lot. You know, when you're talking it out, you are having that conversation and you're listening to what they're saying because Mm -hmm. you know what they would have told you. Exactly. So, yeah. Oh, wow. This is just incredible. And it really does help kids. They're going through so much right now. You know, all the way down to, I mean, a lot of kids you look forward to seeing Santa Claus at the mall or wherever every year. And now mm-hmm. it's like they're either not going or Santa's going to look different. He's going to have a mask on or we've got to see him through plexiglass. I mean, it, just things like that. And they just, you know, it's hard to explain to a child, especially a really young one, that It'll get better. It'll get better. This is what's going on now. This will get better. This too shall pass. Kids just don't understand that. So this really helps them through the process. And and a book like Coffee and Cedar, this is this is not just for adults. This is a book that people read to their children at bedtime. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Absolutely. What is the most interesting story that you, that that you think is the most interesting story that you shared in Coffee and Cedar? Um, I think the. I have to say that it may be the one where the grandfather 
is telling his grandson of how he managed to buy his cafe Mm -hmm. without his father's guidance. Okay. Because that really put the whole um, process in play of, of, of what would they tell me to do. So in it, when he, when the, um, when David is, is saying, you know, I'm, I'm afraid, that, you know, to, to go after this role because it's not going to, you know, this is not like the challenges I had in the past. You know, this, this is now real life that, mm-hmm. I have to, that I have to pursue. And the grandfather says, well, let me tell you a story. When I wanted to buy my cafe, everyone thought I was crazy, and my father had just died, and I did not have his guidance, and I didn't know how I was going to do it. But that in itself is when he really realizes, this is what he taught me. I'm stronger than this. I can do this because he knew that I could. And that's the story itself that I, that I, that I resonate with the most. I love that. I love that because they don't have to be here. Exactly. In order for you to hear them. Exactly. Wow. Oh, I'm exactly. loving this. And, and this helps kids so much. You know, this is something children need that positivity in their lives. They need, you know, real realism is good. It's good that they they're realistic and they know what's real. But they also need to know that dreams are real. Dreams can come true and dreams can happen because of people like the grandfather in your story. You know, Mm -hmm. he is telling these people, telling David, David, it doesn't matter what these people are saying to you. It doesn't matter that they're bullying you. They're being mean and that you're afraid. Just just go for it. You can do this because I know you can do it. Absolutely. It gives them hope. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what we all need right now during this? That's what we all need right yeah. now. Hope. Oh, we need it so badly too. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh my goodness. And and this is just a wonderful, a wonderful book that you can share with your child. Um, Coffee and Cedar Finding Strength from Memories. And it's something that maybe it'll help them through, but as you're reading it, I think it's gonna help moms and dads as well, because sometimes we don't know what to say as parents. Absolutely. And one thing that I've also found from those that have read the book to their children is that, to your point, they get a, they get something out of it as well. Mm-hmm. And what I've I've heard from um, mothers and fathers who've read this to their children is that it was something that it wasn't just a storybook that you know where where children are learning how to read. It's it's something that the parents learn as well. They get something out of it as well. The children enjoy the story. The parents get the message. I mean, it just it, and then they can talk to their kids about it afterwards. So it is mostly, it is basically for both audiences. I love that. With the holidays coming up, that's a little bit of a sense of grief as well for children because you can't go to maybe a family member's house. You're not having a huge Thanksgiving or maybe Christmas is a little smaller this year and different. And and kids, they're trying to understand it, but they sometimes they just can't really grasp it. So mm-hmm. what are things that us moms and dads can do to maybe help them through it and make it a little easier around the holidays? Well, you know, a lot of, uh, first of all, looking at pictures and just remembering mm-hmm. the, the good times with, with those relatives. But one of the things that I, that I did, um, that I have found, and I've checked with, and, and let me put it this way, um, a friend of mine who wrote the foreword to the book, mm-hmm. a psychologist, he's also said to help with memories, you know, anything that, that triggers the olfactory senses is also a wonderful um, contribution to that. Oh, yeah. And so that's actually with coffee and cedar, it ties into that. So whether it's grandmother's perfume or um, anything that, um, or just the scent that uh, that the grandfather had, I mean, anything that might help the kids feel some comfort, mm-hmm. that actually is something else that, I've, that I've, I've heard people do. I mean, people say that, oh my God, I remember when I would go into my grandmother's house and she'd be baking cinnamon buns, and, mm-hmm. you know, just the smell of that helps them remember so anything that can be done to that is familiar to the family during the time of the holidays that you know can trigger a smell trigger a memory that will also help bring comfort I love that. Because it feels like they are there. Yeah, it's like you're keeping them alive through your family traditions. And maybe you don't have any big family traditions right now. But if you think back to when you were growing up or maybe that special important person, whether it was your mom or dad and aunt or uncle or 
a grandparent, there's mm-hmm. something that they did every holiday. There's something you can find. There's something that made it special. I mean, with my family, it was like that, whether it's a certain food that you make or, yeah. um, a, you know, a, a certain, like you said, a certain scent, apple cinnamon, that's fall to me all the time. Absolutely. Um, if I smell, I don't even know if they make it anymore, but if I smell emerald perfume, I immediately mm-hmm. think of my grandmother. She wore that. Yes. Yes. One time I was at a, um, at, um, a Christmas gathering and I was wearing um, a cologne and uh, a specific cologne, and I saw a friend of mine, and she smelled me. She's like, oh, my God, I haven't smelled this in years. That's what my grandfather used to wear. Aww. You know, and then there was another time that I was in Ybor City with my with my mother, and we walked into – we were walking past one of the cigar bars that were there, and the whiff of smoke that came out of the, the, um, the, uh, the cigar bar, she just breathed that in because my great-grandparents, used to have a small cigar factory oh, wow. and they used to test the cigars at home so as a child that was her that was the smell that she had of just you know the cigars from the distance but it was it was a very very you know specific smell and she's like this just reminds me of my grandfather isn't that amazing yeah i mean it just it, how how memories come rushing back mm-hmm. just whether it's 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 a smell Food, for that matter, as well, also it contributes to oh, that yeah. because you think about the happy times of where you were, things that are comforting, mm-hmm. you know, and bring back those wonderful memories. You know, we talk a lot about comfort food here at our radio stations, and there's certain songs we actually have started calling like the comfort food of music mm-hmm. because you hear a song from, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And all of a sudden you're transported. Where was I? What was I doing? Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Especially one of those oh wow songs that you don't hear that often. And all of a sudden you hear it and you're going, oh my gosh, I remember exactly where I was. And I'm the type of person, I'm very detailed. I'll remember what I was wearing, who I was with. And it just all comes flooding back, whether it's m- music, art, whatever it is, a smell. And that really, I think that really does help, especially children going through this right now i mean it's just a mess they're dealing with schools being different some of them are in class they've got plexiglass Mm -hmm. shields some of them are at home learning from home doing distance learning they're away from their friends and it's just a difficult time and anything you can do to make it a little bit easier to take a little bit of that i guess non-normalcy or that oddness out of it is yeah. wonderful, and that is great advice, especially during the holidays for these kids. Thanksgiving, yeah, um, Aunt Jenny can't be here today, but, you know, mom, mom made Aunt Jenny's uh, pecan pie, the exact recipe. Mm-hmm. She gave me the recipe. I made it, so maybe a little bit of her is here today. Absolutely. There's too much realism nowadays for, for kids, yeah. and I, I think there, there's got to be something that, that can help. Yeah. There's got to be something the families can to do in order to help comfort them during this. Because to your point, they're not seeing their friends, they're not seeing their relatives. Yeah. It's just all too real and not normal. It is, it is. And it's overwhelming for them, you know. Some of them are, are the little kids that are just starting to grasp all that. They've just started school. They're maybe five, six, seven years old. Some of them are the older kids, you know, the young adults that are in high school and are having a real tough time too because they're at that age where they want to be with their friends. They want to be independent. And now they're being told, well, nobody's really independent right now because we have to be careful with what's going on. On. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. I love this. I love the name of your book, Coffee Thank and you. Cedar, because I, I, I immediately, when I read the name of a Coffee and Cedar, Finding Strength from Memories, I'm like, I can almost call, smell the coffee and the cedar. I love those smells. <laughs> you know, it's one of those smell things with me. And I just thought that was wonderful. And you've got two award winning books, which is awesome. So Thank tell you. me what you're working on now. Well, I got to tell you, with COVID mm-hmm. and um, and the inability to go out and do much, I've taken this time to actually write down some more stories Ooh, that I wanted I love to work it. on. So the first thing that I did is that I um, I uh, basically took coffee and theater and I turned it into a one act play. Ooh! So um, I'm hoping to. Um, to premiere it at the Orlando Fringe Festival next May. I entered the lottery, so I'm fingers crossed. I find out next month whether oh, I was selected or not. That's awesome. Fringe Fest is so fun. 
It is a I lot love of fun. it. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, so I, I took that story and I, and I put it into a one act play. Wow. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. And when I told people that I'm doing there, they, I mean, they immediately just gasped and they're like, oh, we can't wait to see it. So, oh, it's going to so be awesome. I can already tell. You know, so that's very encouraging. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. The other thing is that I found, I, I, I wrote two other books, got them edited, and the, um, a very similar to Coffee and Cedar, where I'm, I'm hiring the, the same illustrator, Mike Woodcock, brilliant illustrator. Mm-hmm. Um, when I found him, he was um, he knew exactly what I was looking for, and it's like it, it seems as if he just reached into my brain and pulled out how I envisioned my characters. So mm-hmm. he really brought them to life, and so he's he's going to be illustrating uh, the two other books that I've got going on. This is that they're both I'm um, going to be pet related. And Ooh. the life lessons that we learn from our dogs. I learn so much from my dogs. I really oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love it. In fact, we just had to put down our Great Dane uh, a few oh. months ago. He was 12. And just the things you learn watching them. And, and you learn that your dog thinks you're a pretty good person no matter what. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's, it's, it, is, it is just unrequited love. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it is. It is um, they just they love you. Yeah. They, they, they Regardless. Yes. They do. It's a good feeling. Yeah. It's so great. So where can listeners find you on social media and on the web? If they're interested in your book, where can they go? Absolutely. You can go to my website, which is um, dhcermeno.com, C-E-R-M-E-N-O, so mm-hmm. D-H before that. Um, my book, Coffee and Cedar and Rising Sunsets, are both available on Amazon. You can also find me on Facebook, um, D.H. Sermeno, and I have a page for both of my books, Rising Sunsets and Coffee and Cedar. And then I'm also on Instagram. Coffee and Theater. That's excellent. We're so excited for you. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Um, we're looking forward to the play now. Now that you've put it out there, now we expect to see it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, Kathy, I will provide you all the information and you come down for the Fringe Festival. Hopefully I will, I will be selected and I'll keep you posted. We'll keep oh, our that fingers crossed. Cr- yeah. We will keep our fingers crossed for you. That's it. it's so exciting. My first interview with an author. I loved it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm so honored that you that you selected me. I really, really am. Well, thank you, you so, so much. You are so very welcome and you've given such great advice um, for parents and for children. So we really appreciate that. Thank you so much, D.H., Thank you, Kathy. Thank you again to my guest today, D.H. Sermenio, author of Coffee and Cedar, Finding Strength from Memories and Rising Sunsets. Homepage is presented as a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM 92.5 and 95.5. Your comments are always welcome and you can email me at homepage at ncfmgroup.com. You can also listen to Homepage by going to our websites at 93.7 K Country.com and windfm.com. I'm Kathy Dugan. Please join us again next Sunday for Homepage.